Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, friends. Amy Esther's husband here. Uh, I've been invited to join in on a special video where I answer a few questions from you guys about what it's like to be the partner or spouse of a person with chronic illnesses. If you haven't been here before, my wife, Amy Esther, has several chronic illnesses. This has caused us to be on doctor's visits for months and months and trying to find exactly what's wrong with her. And luckily we have found some answers uh, and we've also learned a lot along the way, which is why we've made this YouTube channel, or rather, she's made this YouTube channel. And we want to just get this information and support out there. If you'd like more information on Amy and her chronic illnesses, then please look down below at the links or subscribe to her channel if possible. Thank you. Question number one, how do you not get depressed when your wife is so sick all of the time? So that was a bigger struggle uh, when we first started going through these trials, these problems. Um, it was hard because every doctor we went to didn't seem like they had any answers. And every treatment we tried just felt like either this massive restriction on what the both of us could do, or something that just didn't change or help anything at all. Uh, I would say that the best way to stay positive yourself as the partner of the person with chronic illnesses is to understand that as much as you want to help and as much as you want to do for them, it's impossible to completely ease that burden. Uh, as soon as you start thinking to yourself, I'm failing because she or he is still sick and still feeling bad, then you're tying yourself to something that's potentially unsolvable or at least can't be solved in that moment. So it's important to understand that progress is gonna happen in small steps. Don't tie your emotions to how your partner is feeling because you don't want to get dragged down when you should be the one who's helping lift the other up. Question two, <clears throat> what do you do when she's having a bad day? So this is a good one. So my wife, thankfully, ever since we've discovered a few treatments like her compression socks, and I'm sure that you can find links to videos about her story um, down below. As soon as we started finding treatments, it helped a lot. But before that, every day was a bad day. And it was really hard because I hardly ever knew what to do. Uh, I remember thinking that one of, the, one of the things I hated that she did was that she would just eat popcorn uh, for dinner, for lunch, like three times a day. That was just her meals, it was just popcorn. And I remember thinking like, what am I supposed to do about this? This is not healthy. But <clears throat> what I eventually learned was that I needed to just trust the way she was feeling. Right. Turns out that popcorn was good for her to some extent because it was really salty. And salt is one of the treatments to her POTS, uh, polyorthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Did I get that wrong? Postural. Postural. I always get that wrong. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Anyways, the point of that is that to help your spouse have a good day, you need to try to find any little victory that they can get in a day, whether that's just eating a bowl of popcorn or you know, having that treat that they want, even though they know it's bad for them, uh, helping them just get through each small, basically take small victories where you can. Uh, that's a good way to help them to at least improve their day somewhat. And then always trying to be positive yourself. That links back to the first question. All right, question three. What do you do when nothing you do helps? Okay, this is a hard one because by definition, if nothing is helping, then there's nothing you can do, right? But that being said, it's important to understand that there are things that do help. Not, there's never going to be a moment where nothing helps. I, I think that it comes down to learning, learning about your partner or spouse, learning how it helps, like how things uh, affect them in any given way. One thing to realize is that it's hard for you to make someone happy. Uh, this is something that I bet you my wife talks about in her Chronically Me program. Uh, basically, you need to be the source of your own happiness however you can. And when you try to make someone happy, it usually doesn't work out. And that's just because you aren't that person. It's very difficult to sort of inception into them happiness. 
rather, it's important to, to be supportive and let them make themselves happy. Because once they can make themselves happy, they'll be less dependent on you and less dependent on any other person and more dependent on themselves. All right, question four. Do you feel pressured to do more? So yeah, I do. Uh, this is one of those things where I always am thinking to myself, what can I do to help ease her burden? Right? What can I do that will make her day better? What can I do? And I often think less about myself than I do of her. Um, but that being said, I think my advice would be you have to make sure that you're helping yourself uh, just as much, if not even a little more, than you're helping your partner. Uh, to give you an example, I always think about the, the life support, the, the oxygen masks on an airplane. They always say, put it on yourself before you put it on your spouse. And you have to sort of have that mindset where you say, well, I'm no less important than my spouse. I'm still half of this partnership, right? And if you just decide, okay, well, I'm just gonna hold that oxygen mask on them, well, often it's not very efficient because it's not going to help them as much as it would have helped you. And then you're also getting no help. So just remember that even if you do feel pressured to do more, you have to put the mask on yourself first. You have to help yourself just as much, if not a little more. Question four, do you feel pressure to constantly take care of her? So this goes right back to that last question. It's the same principle. Just make sure you're taking care of yourself just as much, if not a little more than you're taking care of your spouse. Because at the end of the day, you, they are going to be able to help themselves probably more efficiently than you would be able to help them. And if you're not helping yourself, that's gonna make you more depressed. Take it back to question one. You don't wanna get depressed because then you're gonna drag both of you down even more at an even faster rate. You gotta think, and this is gonna be a terrible example, and I bet you Amy gives me the stink eye when I say it, but it's a little bit like one of you has to be a flotation device and the other one has to be an anchor, right? Your spouse may be a bit of an anchor. They may be dragging you down, or your partner. Uh, they may be dragging you down or trying to drag both of you down, not intentionally, but just because of how sick they are and how bad they feel. You need to be that flotation device, and it doesn't help when you anchor yourself at the same time. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can't constantly help. Uh, you just have to understand that that's just not the way things work. You're not gonna be helping them and you're not gonna be helping yourself. And it could be that you have kids or it could be that you have other people in your life who are important or, or jobs or anything like that. If you are just constantly paying attention to your partner, then those things are gonna fall by the wayside and that could have terrible repercussions. Question six. What do you do for fun together when your spouse can't do anything? Uh, so I would need a little more information there, right? Can't do anything for my wife means, okay, well, she can't go on long walks. She can't stand in line at places. She can't eat certain foods or at certain restaurants. So that being said, there are a lot of things that she can do. Um, now, when there are times when she's just so, so, so sick that nothing is gonna happen, we're just, we're not going anywhere off of a couch cushion, then it's important to have good activities you can do together on that couch. Um, spreading, spreading out your, your level of activities and being able to say, okay, on good days, we can go do SeaWorld. Terrible example. We can go do SeaWorld. On bad days, we can watch SeaWorld videos on YouTube. <laughs> so, I, mean, I don't know why I'm on SeaWorld here, but you get the idea. If you enjoy playing board games, that's a good one. When they're at their lowest point, you can also play video games, you can watch a show, uh, you can do any number of things. The question is, you just have to make sure that you have broadened the amount of activities on both ends of the spectrum so that at the good times you can do lots and that satisfies you so at the bad times you don't feel so pressured and don't feel like you're wasting your time. Question seven? I don't remember. Question seven, how do you balance your needs with your spouse's? So <clears throat> basically, how do I implement that whole oxygen mask thing that I'm talking about? I would say making sure that I have a chunk of time every day to myself. Uh, that really helps me at least, and it may not be as important for you. You may need something different, some other sort of system, but 
it's important for me that at least for an hour or two every day, I can just take off all my burdens, you know, unload the backpack and just relax and do whatever thing I want, right? It could be playing a game. It could be reading a book. It could be watching a show. Um, it could be whatever you enjoy for yourself. Uh, the only other thing I would advise is try to find activities that you enjoy that also don't completely take you away from your partner in, in the sense that if they really need you, you're able to drop it in the case of an emergency. You're not necessarily going out hiking for four hours at a time or five hours. Uh, you want to still be available while also sharpening the saw for yourself. And last question, how do you deal with someone when your loved one's illness is minimized by others? So if I understand this question correctly, for example, let's say uh, a mother-in-law or a coworker or a neighbor seem to not, let's say they don't believe or they're not taking your partner's chronic illnesses seriously, uh, that's a real challenge because many people don't understand how bad chronic illnesses can be when, hey, they look fine. Um, I would say that what I would do is try to either educate that person politely, uh, and if that doesn't work out, I would just, I would evaluate how important that person is because you don't want people who are gonna be, you know, throwing rocks at your lifeboat here. You don't want people who are gonna try to drag you down even more in your life. Um, sometimes that's unavoidable. Sometimes it's family or a close coworker, but at the very least, you can try to minimize that person's influence in your life, right? Maybe talk with them less or um, try to teach them what it really is like for you and your spouse. If you can do that, then I believe what would happen is they would try to become more supportive. Uh, but at the worst, I would just say evaluate how important that person is because if they're not taking you or your spouse seriously, um, then they should, I mean, they should do that if they want to be a part of your life. They should be respectful at the very least. Um, so you just have to sort of evaluate that. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me on this Q&A. Uh, hopefully I'll be back again on the channel if I did all right. I got the thumbs up, I'm good. So please click down below and check out Amy Esther's brand new program, Chronically Me. I've seen her do countless hours of work on this and it really has uh, been such a huge thing for her because she's taking all of the things that have helped her over the past four years and she's condensing and applying them into this course. And I know that if you try it out, that you will be pleasantly surprised and, and find out that this chronic illness that you're having or your spouse is having or partner is much more manageable than you think. All right, everyone, that's my time. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any more questions for me, I'd be happy to answer. Just leave them below in the comments. And please subscribe to Amy Esther's channel so that uh, you can join us again next time and join her for all of her other videos. Thank you so much. It's hard to breathe. I'm like, gotta keep talking, gotta keep talking. Jaw hurts.